Hey there, it's Lizzie. So we are going to be cleaning the first floor of my house today if you would like to join along. I'm going to be doing not a deep clean today, but just a preliminary cleaning, kind of resetting the space. Um, we did have some guests stay with us earlier this week, and so I'm kind of getting everything back to normal from our guest visit. So before I start cleaning anything, I'm getting myself set up. So first, of course, we need coffee, and the creamer that I'm using is called Super Creamer. I'm really enjoying that it is lactose-free, or I think it's 99% lactose-free, and it's also sugar-free. It's got some other good stuff in there that's really nice. I'm trying to avoid a lot of sugar right now, so that has been really good. I'm also getting some ice water set up for myself to kind of counteract the dehydrating effects of the caffeine. So I try to have at least two glasses of water per additionally per day um, for every like one cup of caffeine that I drink. I'm also getting myself set up with something to listen to. So when I'm cleaning, I will either listen to some good like upbeat music, so like salsa. I've also got a really good anime um, like kawaii music playlist. Um, but today I'm feeling like a podcast, so I am using Spotify to pick a good podcast. I have a lot of podcasts saved right now to listen to, um, and I have a really good mix of like fun fiction stuff and then like some educational podcasts. So the one that I'm picking to listen to today is this Science Versus episode of Butterflies Are Secret Monsters. Um, and this episode was super interesting. Uh, so butterflies, I did not know this, but they will seek out like sources of salt and minerals. And one of the ways that they seek those out is by drinking like tears and blood and feces from other animals. So they'll literally like, they found like deer with wounds and they're like, there's a bunch of butterflies in the wound, which is so like hardcore and not what you think of normally for a butterfly that you're like, oh, they're so cute, and, like unicorns and stuff, but really like they're, they're eating blood. Like it's crazy. Um, so in here, this is a living room and this is where, so my partner's brother was staying with us for about a week. We had the mattress set up in here. So this was like his home base. So this is the main place that I'm kind of resetting right now. Um, I kind of want to put the cushions back where they go and wipe everything down. Um, I did clean before he came, but I think it's also good to just kind of clean afterwards. You know, we weren't doing a lot of cleaning while he was here just because we're entertaining. So now is a good time for me to hit everything hard and get up all, you know, all the extra dust and, and things that are floating around the house. So I'm wiping down all of the side tables, getting all the stuff off of them. Um, it's mostly just like dust and a little bit of sand and things because we were going out and doing some adventures um, but also I'm noticing there's a lot of cat hair on everything because we do have a new cat you can see her over in the corner of the frame she's on the back of that chair um, her name is Scout and she is an all-black cat she's got beautiful green eyes and I got her from the Humane Society a couple weeks ago um, when I, I've been looking for a cat for a while, to be honest, and like every time I would go, I would see, like I wasn't really clicking with any of the animals or ones that I did really like, they were literally in the process of being adopted already. So when I saw Scout, um, they had on the thing that she was 10 years old and she's super, super like sweet and friendly. Um, and she's not the kind of friendly where like, some cats, if you pet them too much, they'll get overstimulated and, and they'll turn around and bite you. She doesn't do that at all. She's very like sweet. Um, and when I saw she was 10, I was like, oh, like it's really hard for them to adopt out black cats and older cats. So I decided to take her home. But here's the crazy thing. So I took her to the vet a few days ago and the vet was like, she is definitely not 10 years old. She's probably no more than one year old. So that must be like a typo that they put one zero and it should have been one. So I think that's really awesome um, to hear because now that means I'm gonna have a lot more time with her. She is a wonderful cat. I love her so much. <clears throat> so over here, I'm getting the other side of the living room cleaned up as well. I'm just wiping down the other side table and I have I try not to keep a lot of stuff on the surfaces in the house so we just have like two little candles over there and then this table is more so for like you know when you have a coffee you can set it down there um, but things 
you know when you have guests over you're not cleaning so things are kind of accumulating as we go um, and then those games that were there so th this is a problem that I have that I'm trying to get better at and tell me if you can relate to this but um, if I find like something that goes somewhere else I'll go to take it there and then when I get there I'll be like oh well this other thing needs to be cleaned and then I end up on this long trail of things that never that like everything is getting started and nothing is getting finished and that's exactly what's happening here with this game closet so as you can see like it's not it's not really messy it doesn't really need to be cleaned right now but when I went to put those games away I noticed there was some stuff in the wrong spot so there wasn't space for them to be put away and so it ended up with this whole thing of me cleaning out the closet um, which is fine like I'm not upset about it because I'm I gave myself a, um, an amount of time to clean and I stayed within that amount of time total so it's okay if, if I'm doing a little extra here and there um, for deep cleaning but um <clears throat> so I'm trying to get some those games needed to go up on the top shelf but there was stuff up there that wasn't supposed to be up there so I was trying to reorganize that um, and this system that I have for this closet I, I saw it on Pinterest I think a few years ago and it's worked really well for us so far. So all of the big games go up on the top and then I have like a shoe organizer on the side that keeps all of the smaller games. So like the card games like Exploding Kittens and things like that will get put in there. And this makes it really easy to take out, like you can see all the games that are in there so you can take out what you want and it doesn't cause a huge avalanche of everything like falling over and you know a mess because everything has its own little slot that it goes into um, so I was just kind of reorganizing all of that getting rid of things the only the only game that I did get rid of was a that Scrabble game that you saw earlier because it was still wrapped in the plastic and I know for a fact we are not gonna play Scrabble anytime soon so I decided to uh, get rid of that one and then I'm just putting everything else back where it goes. Um, the only thing in this closet really is those games. And then I keep my holiday decorations on the other side in like giant plastic bags. Um, so my rule is if it doesn't fit in the plastic bag, I can't keep it. So that way that'll keep, that keeps me from overdoing it with like the Halloween decorations because those are really my favorite. And there's Scout. She likes to perch up on the top of the balcony. It makes me a little bit nervous because she is not the most sure-footed, but I'm sure she'll be fine. I'm also getting uh, the floor vacuumed up in here because we have popcorn ceilings in the whole house. And one of the downsides of that is that if you accidentally bump the ceiling, it sends a shower of little popcorn things like little foam beads all over the place and when I was getting stuff up on the top shelf I hit the ceiling so there's a bunch of like you can't really see it in the video but there's just a bunch of little pieces of white foam all over the floor and all over the stuff down there <laughs> that, that I was getting cleaned up um, and I'm using so this vacuum I'm using is the shark and it's supposed to be like I think it's the shark navigator so it's really good for getting into a lot of small spaces with the main vacuum part and the attachments um, it's got a really nice long thing so you don't have to bend over and reach as far and I shoved into the end of it another random vacuum attachment that I had lying around I'm also cleaning out the litter box here so this litter box um, I'm using pretty litters cat litter and I actually had this left over from my last cat that passed away about a year ago and he was older and having some issues so I decided to go with the pretty litter because it's supposed to show if there's any like bladder issues going on by changing the color of the litter um, and since I had it left over I'm using it with Scout but I probably won't purchase it because the actual size of the cat litter is very small and so even with that mat that I used to catch everything um, a lot of litter still ends up getting tracked like up and down the hallway so I have to be pretty on top of vacuuming and sweeping in that area so that it doesn't end up tracked all over the entire house especially because we don't wear shoes in the house i'm also using that vacuum attachment to get in all the cracks of this sofa so i really like this squishy leather sofa um, but it does trap stuff deep in the crevices and then same here i'm just getting the surfaces I'm not doing any super deep cleaning because i did deep cleaning before we had guests 
So this is just kind of like to get any sand and, or lint or anything off of the surfaces. Um, Cause we did go to the, we went to the beach, we went kayaking, we went hiking, we went all over the place. So there was a lot of sand and dirt getting brought into the house from all of our adventures. Um, and I'm just trying to like get everything, you know, more so cleaned up. And over here, this is our main dining table. I really like this table because I think it's super unique and interesting. Um, but it kind of ends up being like a landing spot for a bunch of stuff. So I'm putting away like the bed sheets and this mattress pad. You're going to see that come up later. I purposely did not put that all the way away because I know that if I did take it where it goes, I would end up getting lost in another room of the house and cleaning something else. So I've been kind of just moving things as I go. Then right here, so these are all of our rags. Um, so we don't use, or we try not to use paper towels or anything like that. So we use a lot of cleaning rags and hand towels instead. So I've got one pile for hand towels and then one pile for cleaning rags. But to be honest, um, the hand towels get used as cleaning rags and the cleaning rags get used as hand towels almost all the time. So they all end up getting like kind of stained and runky. Um, but despite that, like they are all clean and I really like using this system. Um, so like once something gets used or like if it gets, you know, if you use it to wipe the counter or whatever, we have a bucket out in the garage that I throw everything in. And then once the bucket is full, I'll run it through the washing machine and then fold everything and put it away. Um, and I think this system works really well, especially for the number of people that are in the house because then we're not creating a bunch of waste by using paper towels all the time. I've also got some mop heads back there, so I don't use the disposable mop heads, I use these cloth ones. They're actually from the Dollar Tree, um, or two of them, that big orange one is not from the Dollar Tree. But when I'm cleaning the floors, what I'll usually do is get like hot, hot, hot water, like almost boiling water with a little bit of uh, vinegar, and I'll use that to clean the floors, and that pretty much gets everything up and it doesn't leave any weird residue. Um, because, you know, since we don't wear shoes in the house and we've got the cat, I don't want to have anything sticky or powdery on the floor left over after you clean. Um, so yeah, that works really well for us. Right here, I'm just putting away all of the dish towels and the cleaning rugs under the sink. And you can see we've got a really big pile of them. Um, and we go through them. We go through them for sure. Um, but I try to keep all of my cleaning stuff as like natural and eco-friendly as possible. So even when it comes to the actual cleaning supplies, um, my floor cleaner is vinegar based. Um, and then the only thing that's like a, a very powerful cleaner that I really use is the LA's Totally Awesome. That's also from the Dollar Tree. But that one is more for like if you have a big grease spill or um, anything that's like super crusty that like you cannot just clean with hot water and vinegar. That's what I'll use that for. Um, and when we were, we used to run an Airbnb, I would use that because it was a little bit more intense for cleaning up after guests to help kind of sanitize between guests. Then over here, I'm cleaning up my counter for the kitchen. We don't really keep a bunch of stuff out on our counters, like I was saying with the tables. Um, I like to keep everything as like low item clutter as possible. Um, and that also makes it way easier to clean. So all that stuff was left out from cooking earlier and we're getting it put away. And that jar right there that I was smelling, that's my, my new project, it's my fermentation jar. Um, so what that is, it's got like cabbage and some chili peppers and stuff in it. So kind of like sauerkraut, except um, you're using different spices. So I've got in there Sichuan chili pepper, corn, um, some star anise, cardamom, black pepper, a few other things. And you let that ferment for almost a week with the cabbage in it. Um, you can put really any like hard vegetables in it, but so far I've only really done cabbage. Um, and it's supposed to be very good for your gut bacteria. And I am super enjoying that. Everybody in my household has been snacking on it all the time. We put it on curry, we put it in soups, um, we put it on salad sometimes, all kinds of stuff. It is delicious as well as good for you. And the way it works, you put a little water in that top rim and then that creates like a seal, but it also allows gas to escape as it's fermenting. So over here, I'm getting the counter cleaned up. So we do have a dishwasher. 
but we also will frequently wash things by hand. So that area over there is where all of the dishes that are hand washed are drying. And it does have a tendency to kind of get piled up over there of stuff. Um, so whenever I have the time, I will put everything away where it goes and just kind of clean the area off so it doesn't get too crazy over there. I'm just shaking out those mats. Um, as I'm going, I'm also using this cleaner you've been seeing me use is a mix of water, white vinegar, and I believe there are a few drops of tea tree oil in it as well. Um, and that's what I use for almost all the surfaces in the house that it can be used on just because it's, it's really great for eating surfaces and non-eating surfaces. So I don't have to worry about, you know, is this this safe for the countertops or anything. Just use it on everything, it's all good. Um, if you know of anything better, let me know. I'm always looking for something that's really good at cleaning but is also not invasive, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm just loading up the dishwasher. I've been using these seventh generation packs and getting that running while I do the sink over here. So these are a few things that I couldn't put in the dishwasher. I've got my coffee press, which I'm worried about the plastic more so on that of getting messed up. And then this cup, my friend um, did a custom vinyl on it for me and I don't trust the dishwasher to keep that from getting ruined. So those are getting hand washed. And then I'm also gonna clean out the sink while I'm here. Um, we do quite a lot of cooking, like meal prepping and cooking from home. So the sink can get kind of crusty dusty. Um, and I'm using this Bon Ami, Bon Ami, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is a like powdered abrasive. So I used to use the Ajax with bleach, but I'm trying to get away from like the harsh chemicals. So this is a lot more natural, but it still gives you a lot of extra scrubbing power to get all of the like sink slime out of there. So, you know, you get like the little goo around the drain and everything. Um, like built up food and things. So that really helps you scrub everything off and then you can just rinse it down the drain, no worries about anything. I'm also using a rag to wipe the top edges so that I don't get too much water all over the counters. And that rag might look a little dirty but it is a clean new rag that I'm using to get all of the edges here. You can kind of see in the corner of the screen, I've still got my carrots up from Easter and I know we're pushing into May now, so I'm hoping to get my summer decorations up soon and take down my spring stuff. Um, but I just really like those carrots, like they're just such a good aesthetic vibe for the kitchen. This hand soap I've got here is from Trader Joe's. Um, I really like if you have not been to Trader Joe's, like if you don't have one in your area and you're traveling, like make a point to visit a Trader Joe's because it it's un, unlike any other grocery store I've ever been to. Like they just, they know exactly what they're doing. And I, whenever I run out of hand soap, I'll pick up a new one from there because not only do they try to make sure their products are very clean and minimally minimal ingredients, they also make everything really cute and aesthetic. So this hand soap bottle is probably not more than $2.99, um, but it's really cute just to have up there on the counter and I don't feel like, oh, it's like hand soap, ew, you know, with like the, the one that has the fish in it, <laughs> if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Over here, I had some vinegars going, so I've got an apple cider vinegar that I'm transferring into another container. Um, that one is, that one's been going for a while and I think she's ready to go to be a, to start being used. So I got rid of that. And then the other container was a jar of fire cider, um, that I think it only has like one use left in it and I need to make a new batch of fire cider for the household. Even though we're coming out of like flu season, so it's not really that pertinent to be, um, doing a lot of cold and flu remedies, but... The fire cider has been good. The fire cider has been good for us. Um, I got a couple cat toys here that I'm 
putting in Scout's little basket and just kind of cleaning up everything else, the remnants on the counter. Now, am I the only one that feels like they <laughs> are the only one taking out the trash? I feel like I take out the trash all the time and no one else ever gets to it. Like it's just always like stinking and stuff and I don't know what what is happening with the trash that it always smells so bad. If anybody has like a remedy for the trash being super stinky, like let me know. Cause we even switched from just an open trash can to the one with the lid. And it's still like, whenever you open it, it is a menace, a very stinky menace. And that other can over there was just a recycle bin. So I took that out to the main recycling outside. Um, our area does paper, glass, and plastic, which is really nice. So we have a pretty good even split between um, trash and recycling right now. Um, and then the plastic bags, I do, I drop them off at the grocery store whenever I remember to take them. I'm also doing some dry vacuuming on the floor, so the cat does not like that. Um, but I like to, I, when I, whenever I can remember, I like to vacuum over sweeping because I feel like it picks up a lot more of the little dusty things and like the dirt that's on the floor. There goes that mattress pad again, so I'm <laughs> taking that outside um, so that it can air out and get some sun and kind of de-germ out there while I'm vacuuming this little area here. This um, landing on the stairs is kind of like our hangout area so the cat has claimed that bottom step and she loves to lay there and just get the sun so that has that collects a lot of cat hair right there and you know it's a high traffic area there's a lot of people walking through it also is like whenever we're eating dinner um we'll eat at the table that brown glass table that you just saw that's across from it so people will be eating there and then some people will just sit on the stairs and eat um it's a real cozy spot. If, I don't know what it is about that spot, but it's real cozy. And I said I'm not doing deep cleaning, but one of my rules is like, if I think about it, I'll do it. So like this with the, the nozzle, there's a few little pieces of popcorn ceiling stuck in the crack between the carpet and the wall that the vacuum didn't get. So I was like, let me just vacuum the edges really quick in this area. And I'm not stressing about like, oh, I have to do the whole stairs. Um, my resolution for this year is to half-ass more things, so I've been trying to literally just do a little bit instead of stressing about doing a lot and making it perfect. And that has really taken a lot of stress off of me as far as feeling like I need to get everything done and feeling like everything has to be perfect, like I'm allowing myself to half-ass. Um, so here's everything all cleaned and nice and tidy now, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for watching.